Hey, get it, guys. I've still got some files up here for for Brian's uh, ECU, and I thought I'd talk about runtime values. Runtime values, they like live data, so you can actually look at what's going on in that ECU and monitor stuff. I've had a couple of phone calls from guys saying, "Hey, how do I check this?" One of them was the VVTI. How do I check it? Where do I look? How do I find it? It's really simple, and it's a really neat feature. It's great for diagnosing, and it's great for checking things when you're setting up your ECU. These videos I'm making are about you guys learning your way around the ECU, where to find things, looking at different functions. So anyway, runtime values. Let's have a look here. We've got the screen up. It could be in either of these, any of these. It doesn't matter where you are here because it's not in there. It's up here next to the help. So we've got the help file. Then we've got this tuning file. Let's look in the tuning file, the menu. There it is, runtime values. Let's hit that runtime values. It brings this screen up. So in here, the light little arrow up here. So sometimes there's stuff off the side because oh, there's a little arrow. We look under the fuel menu. There's lots of information in here about that fuel, about what's happening. Really important to look at. Say you're trying to set up your cold start. You've got your startup fuel down here of where it's actually putting fuel in. Really good to look at. Really handy. Moving into ignition. It's got the ignition. Actual angle that the ECU believes it's generating. And that should match what's actually happening on the engine. And then it's got the table. And it may have some trims or some differences. So if the table and the angle are different, one of these things may be coming into play. All the knock tables may be coming into play. So you know where it is. If you've got two tables, it'll tell you which table you're on over there. Auxiliaries. Let's have a look in here. Oh, look at that. So that's what's happening. If it's on or off. And the functions are, are like the value of those on off. So here's your boost control. Idle speed. I use this a lot for setting up idle speed. And whether the fans are on or off. Great stuff. Into the digital. This is all your digital inputs and outputs. Oh, no outputs. Inputs. So where your speed's coming from. All those sorts of things. What's on, what's off. Say so you've got a boost switch and you want to see if it's working, you can check it there. And your analogs, again, important, got your TPS reading, what the ECU is seeing, your temperatures, great one for just checking. General, now this one, of course, with Brian with his battery voltage issue, there it is, battery voltage. That's important to check. What your map sensors reading, all those bits and pieces there. So that's really handy information. You'll notice down here, we've got an injector duty cycle. So you can see what the injector duty cycle is. Triggers. When you're trying to fire it up for the first time, it's a good place to check what triggers you've got, whether you've got trig 1 or trig 2. So I use that one quite a bit. On the arrows, moving the arrows along. Motorsport. If you've got anti-lag or boost control, this is where you can monitor what's going on. For me, e-throttle. Now that's pretty important. That'll give you what the output's actually going to be and what's happening in there. So you can check all that and monitor your e-throttle. There's knock control, of course. VVT. And that's what I was asked about the other day. What your cam angles are, what your statuses are, what it's actually generating. If everything's working, pretty much this would be green. We'd be happy. We're all good. However, if things aren't right, then you start questioning. Did have one recently, VVTI. It was, had incorrect cam timing. So the base settings didn't work. Kind of strange. These were all red, but I found it. ECU status, logging is full. That's all fine. As long as it's lots of green, we don't need to worry. But it's good also to check those lambdas of what's happening, whether they're up to temperature. And this miscellaneous, what do we got in here? Mm, oh, yeah, a bit of wheel speed. If you're running steering angles, a lot of people won't use that, but it's good to have that there. 
Now the CAN. This is a great one. CAN to TC channels. I was talking to a guy just recently, uh, qualified tech, and he started asking about um, individual lambda sensors. And of course that kind of scary in price. But also we run individual um, temperature EGTs in um, and it's thermal couple um, exhaust temp exhaust gas temperature EGT we run individual sensors in the exhaust so I did say I think an E triple eight Motec uh, will actually uh, communicate the expander I'll just double check for him we'll go up here into the can uh, it's in this one I'm sure it's in here You know when you want to see something and you just can't find it for that moment? There we go, can set up, just got to think. And mode, we'll just look in this list here. Got an aim dash to set up just soon, so we'll look at that as well. I might do a microtech for some guys who want a cheap option for a dash. Here we go, EGTs, Motec E888 as a pot possibility for EGTs. Can EGT there, so there's some options for for EGT we're okay with that we'll get rid of that now so that's with your can and gasoline direct injection if you've got big enough nuts to try and set up a aftermarket computer on a direct injection engine you're going to want to look at some of that stuff in there okay so just to recap if you want to look at some live data or what your ECU is reading this little menu up here, beside the help, we've got tuning, runtime values. Oh, I already had it up. I'll put it back. There it is. And it's got all this helpful information about what's happening in your engine. And you can look along there and check it all out. Hope that's helpful. And talk to you again soon. Catch you later.